Vanessa, it's hard to imagine a time when we didn't have the blue box recycling system. You know, it began in 1990, but people still get confused about what can go into the blue box and what can't. Absolutely. Actually, I visited a recycling sorter to try to get a handle on some of that. Really opened my eyes. How's that? Well, when I saw the stacks of recyclables just sky high and realized that they're growing every hour, it reminded me that these are still waste materials and that they consume energy through the trucks, the balers, well, even the ships that take them overseas. Now, recycling is important, but I think I'm going to start consuming less. Every day, paper from your curbside recycling ends up in stacks of recyclables. How do I know? You could say I'm on top of things because I'm going to take a look behind the scenes of recycling. But first, we're going to start at home with your curbside recycling. Do you have one of these at home? Today we're going to find out what happens, the cans and paper that you put in your blue box. Oh, hey Al. Al heads up the North Shore Recycling Program, one of the typical recycling programs in Greater Vancouver. I thought today that we'd cover off some of the basics. Uh, where do you want to start? Well, probably with the uh, blue box and the blue bag and the yellow bag, which is pretty well consistent throughout the GVRD. Although every municipality is not the same in what they collect. Right, except there are some consistencies, though, across municipalities, aren't there? Yes, there are. Um, we all collect newspaper, we all collect mixed paper mm -hmm. and containers, but it's the plastics that's where you have to be, where there are some differences, and where you have to be careful about what you put in the blue box. Right, because everyone collects uh, plastics one, two, four, and five. That's correct. Within the triangle, the little triangle is the symbol that the plastics industry uses to indicate the type of plastic that it is. That's the one that you have to look at to decide whether or not it's going to go in your blue box. That's right, because just because it's got a number doesn't mean it's necessarily recyclable. That's correct. If you have any other questions about recycling, then you call the recycling hotline, which is very easy, 604-RECYCLE. So 604-RECYCLE, that's going to be really useful. Let's move on to what you do with the goods that you recycle. So, I mean, cans, do you flatten them or not? We ask people to flatten them so they make more room in the trucks. But what about washing cans out? The most important thing with cans, especially with pet food cans, is to rinse them out. Like not put them in the dishwasher, not use a lot of soap. Yeah, you don't want to be using a lot more energy than it takes to recycle them just to wash them out. That's right. The recycling industry is market driven and uh, most of the municipalities in the GVRD have a revenue sharing agreement with their contractors whereas they share with the revenue that's received from the sale of newspaper and mixed paper in particular. Well thanks a lot Al for taking us through some of these basics. Thank you, my pleasure. Next we'll be taking a look at what happens to these recyclables. Recycling trucks like these arrive at sorting businesses like this one. They dump their loads in allocated places. There's a lot of pushing and shoving with bulldozers. And then each item gets its turn on this long conveyor belt. Right now, we're sorting cardboard, but later on today it could be mixed paper, the kind of magazines and other things you put in your yellow recycling bin. The workers sort out any unsuitable items, and then the rest goes up towards the top into the balers. If you recycle office paper at work, which I know you do, it may come here. Some of the paper is of much higher quality and fetches a better market rate. So Ray's the manager here. What happens to the other items in the blue box, the cans, the glass, the metals? Uh, it goes through a series of conveyors and uh, there's a magnetic separator where we pull out the metals and then it goes through a series of conveyors where we pull out the different colors of glass and then the different types of plastic. And the most popular types of plastic coming from the curbside recycling program are the number two, which are the milk jugs and the detergent bottles. Now the other plastics uh, that remains out of that, most of it goes to China. So what happens to the cans? How are they processed? The cans are collected and these are sent to ABC Recycling. They process the metals and send it to smelters. And you get paid for that service? It depends on the price of a tin can. Remember, paper, cardboard and newsprint are actually banned from landfill and you could be fined. 
There's a lot more information at 604 Recycle. I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scenes of recycling. For the Sustainable Region, I'm Doc Martimmer.